The How to Train Your Dragon movies have been wowing audiences since 2010 with their amazing animation, sweet storylines, and charming characters. The story of the unlikely friendship between Hiccup and Toothless has been nominated for a ton of awards and captured the hearts and minds of moviegoers everywhere. Here are some awesome secrets from all three movies that you've probably never seen. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all the exciting new content from Screen Rant. I am not listening to anything you have to say! Then I won't speak. Just let me show you. The first surprise DreamWorks has for us in the first How to Train Your Dragon movie is we actually meet Toothless before we even realize it. In the very beginning is the classic DreamWorks logo appears on screen, in which the boy sits on a crescent moon with a fishing line dangling into the night sky, we can spot the Toothless silhouette as he flies by. It's one of those blink and you'll miss it moments animators love to slip in under our noses. A lot of people may not know this, but How to Train Your Dragon was actually a book first, before it became a successful animated movie franchise in 2010. And in the 12 book series, Toothless, the adorable but hardly tiny dragon character, is actually very, very small. His original description has him at only the size of an iguana, but it was decided by animators that for the movie, he should be a lot bigger. And we ended up with the giant, lovable Toothless we have today. His size wasn't the only aspect of Toothless that was modified from the book version. Along with making him larger, the animators also modeled his look and behavior off of a black panther, with additional qualities from dogs and domestic cats. These qualities not only make Toothless a very cute dragon, but they allow him to be more relatable to the audience. The dragon is able to express different emotions that remind us of our pets and other animals we've seen in the wild. There's one perfect example of animators using real-life animals as inspiration for Toothless. For a scene in which Toothless is having a problem with the tip of his tail and is flailing around not knowing what to do, one of the animators actually stuck a balled-up piece of duct tape to the end of his own cat's tail and filmed his cat trying to get rid of it. Don't worry, his cat was totally unharmed and it makes for a very cute side-by-side -side video. A big plot point in the first movie and a very important character trait about Hiccup is that he has never killed a dragon. While all the other Vikings take pride in the fact that they have, Hiccup is far gentler and would rather not cause them harm. Ironically, he's the only character we see actually kill a dragon in the end, when he has to take down Red Death to save everyone and bring peace between dragons and Vikings. In the scene where Hiccup reads the Dragon Manual, it might appear as though he's reading an ancient language or something made up for the movies. Actually, what he's reading is written in plain English which has been coded or cryptographed into ancient runes. Runes are the first written language developed by the Germanic people, so what he's reading is actually accurate for the time period in which Hiccup lives. With some careful translating, it's possible to figure out exactly what Hiccup is reading. The terrible terrors are known for being the smallest species of dragon, but no less frightening to anyone that should be unlucky enough to cross their path. What you might not know is that the sounds that the terrible terrors make is actually based off the sound that a chihuahua makes. Not any chihuahua either. Specifically, a chihuahua named Paco. One of the sound designers had seen Paco on the internet and they contacted his owners. <coughs> Paco was compensated with $100 for his time and effort. One of the most touching and interesting things about the ending of the first movie is how the storytellers decided to have Hiccup lose his leg. He's the first amputee to feature in an animated movie that isn't for comedic relief, and apparently the public had a lot to do with why that was kept in. When DreamWorks screened the movie to a focus group, people were so touched by the ending they insisted that it stay the way it was because it took nothing away from who Hiccup was as a person. In the scene right before Toothless brings Astrid and Hiccup to the dragon's nest, we're given a glimpse of many different species of dragons all flying creepily together through the blue clouds. If you look closely at one of the dragons, you can see an easter egg from the animators. Clutched in the talons of the monstrous nightmare is poor Gloria, the hippo from Madagascar. While you might say that it could be any hippo, this fact has been confirmed by the filmmakers in the audio commentary. The village where Hiccup and Astrid live is called Burk, which might just seem like any old Viking word, but it actually really has a deeper meaning than that. Burk is actually a British slang term and a bit of an insult. It's taken from the song Berkeley Hunt, and the abbreviated form is an affectionate way of calling someone a bit of a fool. This is only used by people who don't actually know that it comes from the song, however, so it doesn't really mean anything hurtful. Animators love to throw in references to some of their favorite classic movies wherever they can. And this one that's hidden in the first How to Train Your Dragon is so quick it just might pass you by. In Hiccup's design board, where he draws up plans to fix Toothless's tail, you can see a drawing that looks suspiciously similar to the flux capacitor from Back to the Future, the small Y-shaped device that allows Marty and Doc to travel through time in their DeLorean. 
The scene in the first How to Train Your Dragon movie in which Toothless learns what a smile is and how to do it was in the script, but actually got its inspiration from somewhere more personal. The entire scene is inspired by the way that one of the animator's sons himself learned to smile. After knowing this fact, going back and re-watching the scene makes it even more adorable and heartwarming when you can picture a tiny toothless baby learning how to do the same thing. We crack this mountain open, all hell is gonna break loose. And my undies? Good thing I brought extras. While the Vikings and Viking lore were a huge part of creating the world of How to Train Your Dragon, these aren't the only popular animated and movie characters who have drawn from the same culture. The famous Asgardian God of Thunder Thor is also drawn from Nordic mythology, and you might see one important similarity between him and Stoic. If you take a close look at Stoic's hammer, you'll see that it bears a strong resemblance to Thor's Mjolnir from the Marvel movie franchise. How to Train Your Dragon has quite a few famous voices lending their talents to the cast of characters, such as Jay Baruchel, Gerard Butler, America Ferreira, Kristen Wiig, Jonah Hill, and Christopher Mintz Plassey. But one secret cameo might make fans of both the books and movies very happy. David Tennant, who actually recorded the audiobook versions of the original stories, has a tiny cameo as Spite Loud, Stoic's second in command. While he's unnamed in the movie, he appears in the credits, and super fans will recognize his voice right away. The second installment in the How to Train Your Dragon franchise sees Hiccup and Toothless five years later, and introduced even more amazing actors into the animated world. Kate Blanchett lends her voice to the character of Valka, Jaiman Hansu as Drago, and Kit Harrington as Eret. Kate Blanchett signed on because the first movie had been such a big hit with her two young sons, and wanted to do a project that they would both be very excited about. This was of course before she joined the cast of Thor Ragnarok. While How to Train Your Dragon 2 might feel like an epic and sprawling movie, its timeline may surprise you. Though the first movie in the franchise takes place over a number of weeks, all of the action and adventure in the second one is condensed into only a couple of days. This is made even more interesting by the fact that despite the fact that its exhilarating story makes it seem as though the movie flies by, at 102 minutes long, it's the longest DreamWorks animation movie to date. There's an awesome reference in How to Train Your Dragon 2 that some viewers might not even notice, but fans of Game of Thrones would probably have picked up on right away. In the scene in which Astrid turns to Eret and says, Don't you know anything? There's more than meets the, uh, ear. This is a reference to how Egrit says you know nothing Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. The line was put in because Kit Harington not only voices Eret in the movie, but plays Jon Snow on the popular TV show. In the scene where Valka recognizes Hiccup, she does so because she notices the scar on his chin. You can see the same scar on his chin when he's a baby and is picked up by Stoic. It's a pretty subtle clue from the animation department, but that kind of attention to detail and all those little minute additions are what make this movie franchise one of the best out there. Who finally decided to show up for work. Yay. Sorry, got held up. In the dragon stables in the village of Burke, you might notice some drawings etched into the wooden walls of the barn. These drawings may seem insignificant, but if we know animators, nothing is there without a reason, and almost always has a deeper meaning than at first glance. These drawings were actually done by all the children of all the crew members who worked on the film. That's a pretty awesome perk of having parents who worked for such a cool animation studio. The ending of How to Train Your Dragon 2 was pretty devastating for a lot of people. And watch out if you haven't seen the movie, because we're about to spoil it for you. In the original draft of the script, when Toothless is brainwashed and becomes violent through no fault of his own, it was supposed to be Gobber who was killed by him. But when famous director Guillermo del Toro read it, he suggested that it instead be Stoic who dies as it would have more of an impact. There's a moment in the second movie that is a very direct callback to the first How to Train Your Dragon, but one so subtle that it might be hard to pick up on unless you're looking for it. Drago's Bewilderbeast loses his left tusk, in the same way that Drago himself loses his left arm to a dragon. This parallels the time when Hiccup loses his left leg, which is foreshadowed by the way that Toothless loses his left tail fin. Gobber is one of our favorite characters. Voiced by the hilarious Craig Ferguson, Gobber the Belch is definitely one of the biggest sources of comic relief in the movie, as the lovable and enthusiastic, if bumbling, sidekick to Stoic. Something that may actually surprise you is Gobber is actually the first animated character to come out of the closet in a DreamWorks movie. He alludes to it when he lists reasons why he never married, and it was confirmed by Ferguson and writer Dean Dubois. While anticipation is building for the third installment of the How to Train Your Dragon franchise, there is a little that we do know about the upcoming movie. We know that it will be the final movie in the series and will wrap up the adventures of Toothless and Hiccup. It'll also introduce us to the entire hidden world of dragons. It's also been revealed in the trailer that Toothless is the last of the Night Furies because the rest have been hunted to extinction by Grimmel. 
With every good movie comes a ton of rumors. Either fans go crazy trying to figure out what the plot will be about, or something leaks from the studio and unexpectedly gives it away. The rumors about How to Train Your Dragon Hidden World are purely speculation, but might be onto something. Some suggest that in this movie, we will finally learn the reason that all species of dragon have gone extinct, and why we don't have dragons coexisting with us today. Whether it's correct remains to be seen, but it could be right. In the trailer, we get to see the introduction of the White Knight Fury who Toothless becomes immediately enamored with, and we get to see his hilarious attempts at wooing her as he dances around like a bird of paradise. Some think that because of the danger that they're in by being the last two Night Furies, that the movie will see the two of them fly off into hiding together, being forced to leave Hiccup and the rest of the humans behind to protect them. It would be bittersweet and perfect. There they are, 25 secrets from the How to Train Your Dragon movies. What did you think of this list? Did we miss anything exciting that you think is important? How excited for the hidden world are you? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up with the latest from Screen Rant. Thanks for watching.